So why do only 20% of teams and individuals achieve their potential? Does it in fact relate to PQ? Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor. Let me tell you about this book that I've read. PQ stands for Positive Intelligence Quotient. It's a score between 0 and 100, and it tries to balance up how helpful your mind is being. A high PQ means that your mind is helping you. A low PQ means your mind is not helping you. How do you get it? Well, you add up the number of times that your mind is actually helping you. If it's being positive, it's serving you, you gain points. If you, if it's being negative, you don't gain points. Therefore, uh, a PQ score of 75, for example, would mean that 75% of the time your mind is helping you and only 25% of the time it's not helping you. Of note, neutral periods in which your mind is being neutral don't count towards your PQ. There's a critical tipping point of 75%. And this is because if you can get generally uplifted by your internal dynamics of your mind, then it'll keep going up. Whereas if it's below that crucial 75%, you'll keep getting dragged down. And that would be actually the reason why 80% of people and teams don't achieve what they could because their PQ is below 75. That three to one ratio is mentioned in other books and positivity, a great one I've summarized here. I'll put the link below in the chat. So you'll hear this common assumption that you need to work hard so then you can succeed. And if we're happy, we'll actually then be happy as a result of our achievements. In reality, it's actually a high PQ that gives you both happiness and performance, which then leads to greater success and keeps you on that upward spiral. Because success without happiness is possible with a low PQ, but the only path to great success with lasting happiness is through a high PQ. Let me tell you a bit more about the 10 common reasons in which our minds are sabotaged by internal monologue that by knowing about you can help address. So the first one, the most common one that we virtually all have is called the judge. It's the master saboteur. And in essence, this is one that's constantly finding faults with yourself, with others, and conditions and circumstances. And it's one of the main drivers of anxiety and stress, disappointment, shame and guilt. And it's a, got a self-justifying lie. It kind of tries to say, well, it's tough love, the voice of reason. If it isn't without this, you'd be lazy and unambitious. But in essence, the judge is a destructive saboteur. Another is the stickler. This is a need for perfection, order, organization that is just taken too far. And it makes people actually uptight and others anxious around you. And it actually saps your energy or your team's energy over these measures of perfection. If you've watched a few of my videos, you'll notice I'm not a stickler. So I, I, this isn't one I'm suffering with. The judge, however, I'm very aware of. But the stickler's lie is actually with the perfectionism is always good and that you don't pay a huge price for it when you actually do. A pleaser is somebody who, it's this internal monologue that keeps you wanting to please others and gain affection by helping, rescuing or flattering others constantly. And it causes you to lose sight of your own needs. And at times you're then resentful of other people as a result of this, because it tries to encourage other people to be overly dependent on you. And its key lie is that you're pleasing others because it's a good thing to do, denying that you're actually really trying to win their affection and acceptance indirectly. Next I'll discuss is the hyperachiever. This makes you dependent on constant performance and achievement for self-respect and self-validation. And it keeps you focused actually on external successes rather than your own internal criteria for success and happiness. And this can often 
lead to these unrealistic workaholic tendencies. And it, the main difficulty is you could potentially fall out of touch with deeper emotions and deeper relationships. And its lie is that your self-acceptance should be conditional on performance and external validation. Personally, when I make these YouTube videos, I look at the metrics behind it. I really appreciate anybody who subscribes, so feel free to subscribe. But I know that my own driving force shouldn't be that external validation. So that hyperachiever bit I, I, I'm very aware of. Next we'll talk about is the victim. The victim's a common one that you'll see. This wants you to feel emotional and temperamental as a way of gaining affection and attention. And there's these extreme internal feelings, particularly painful ones that can result in you feeling as if you're a martyr or attempting to be a martyr. And the consequences are that you waste a lot of your own mental and internal emotional energy and you're actually causing others to feel frustrated, helpless or guilty. And the, you will see all, will know when you hear that, lots of people who you think they've got this victim uh, highly dominant in their internal thought process. And the lie is that the victim assumes this is the way of caring and obtaining attention for yourself. It's clearly not. Hyperrational involves this intense, exclusive, executive focus on rationalizing everything. And that actually includes relationships. And it causes you at times to be impatient of people's emotions and regard some emotions really as unworthy of much time or, or consideration. And when under the influence of this hyper-rational, you can often be uh, perceived as cold, distant or arrogant. And the, the main disadvantage of this is that it limits the depth and flexibility in relationships in both work and in personal life and may also intimidate those who are less analytically minded as you. And its lie is that rationality is the most important and helpful form of intelligence that you possess. I'd say myself, that's probably number three on the list. Hypervigilant. Now this is when you feel intense and continuous anxiety about dangers surrounding you and what could go wrong. And in essence, if you're hypervigilant, You'll never rest, and it results in a great deal of actual ongoing stress, just worrying about what happened, what will happen, what could happen, and it'll wear yourself and others down. And its lie is that the dangers around you are, are bigger than they actually are, and that this non-stop vigilance is the way to tackle them. And at times you'll see that as a self-fulfilling prophecy. I was worrying about something, therefore it didn't happen, rather than... I was worrying about something and on retrospect I shouldn't have been doing so. Restlessness is this constant need to search for greater and greater excitement in the next activity through perpetual busyness and it doesn't allow you to feel much peace or contentment with your actual current activity and that current activity is key to mindfulness and actually enjoying the moment. And this gives you this never-ending stream of distractions and at times you'll not be able to focus on what you're doing and as a consequence relationships, friendships can suffer. And it's difficult uh, when you're having time keeping ruled by somebody with this restlessness because you may feel distanced from them because they're so busy trying to live their life to the full that they actually ignore the moment and miss out on life when it's happening. The controller runs a mind the anxiety-based need to take charge of things, control and bend other people's wills to their own. And it generates high anxiety and impatience when that is not possible. And in the controller's worldview, you're either in control or you're out of control. And while the controller allows you to get short-term results, in the long term it tends to generate a lot of resentment in others and prevents them from just getting on and living their life to the fullest. And its lie 
is that you need to be a controller to generate the best results from the people around you. That's simply not true, and that's a form of micromanagement that often demoralizes teams. Last but not least is the avoider. This focus is on positive and the pleasant feelings in an extreme way with a desire to deeply avoid any unpleasant tasks or conflicts. Life is unfortunately full of these. So this tends to lead to habits of procrastination, conflict avoidance, and rather than actually resolving things, festering conflicts may occur throughout life in which they're being sidestepped, whereas actually if the conflict occurred, things could then get done. So its lie is that you're being positive by avoiding problems. So those 10 saboteurs I've summarized, do any ring true to you? It may be that you've got a combination of several of these, or you may well see them in others around you. And it's important to know what other people's may be so you can interact with them accordingly. So what can you do to counteract these saboteurs, which are essentially internal mind enemies? Well, there's this concept of the sage, and this represents the deeper, wiser part of you. And when you feel as if you're getting carried away by a saboteur or the tension of the moment falling victim to something, then it's when you, you can turn to your sage to rise up and you can either see this challenge as an opportunity that you're facing or potentially even a gift or something that could be turned into one. So there's five great powers of the sage that you can use to meet any challenge. Explore with great curiosity and an open mind. I think life learn lifelong learning is absolutely key here. Empathize with yourself and also others, bringing in some compassion and understanding into any situation. Innovate and create new perspectives, outside the box solutions. Navigate and choose a path that best aligns with your deeper underlying values and mission. Activate and take decisive action without distress, interference or distractions from the saboteurs. And the most effective way to weaken your saboteurs is simply to acknowledge them, label them. You don't have to call them the judge and the avoider and things. You can call them whatever you like, but you can say, oh, that, that's happening again. It's there. I've noticed it. But I'm actually going to focus on the moment here. And the, there's this concept of PQ reps. These are activities to try and boost your PQ score. And if you can do this regularly, you can hit that crucial 75% PQ score and thrive. So what do you do to do a PQ rep? Well, firstly, you could think of doing them with regular activities that you're doing, such as going to the bathroom that we would all do every day. That could be a prompt to think of doing a PQ rep. Another prompt would be if ever you're aware of a saboteur. And basically, a PQ rep is being mindful. It's being in the moment, appreciating your body and the surroundings. You may become aware of your body, the weight of your body on the floor, or as you sit on a chair, or it could be deliberately feeling that floor or carpet beneath your toes. And just thinking, taking a moment to appreciate that and whilst you're doing that, you're actually letting go of any of these thoughts that may be harming you. And it's of note, if you can build up your PQ in one aspect of your life, then it will help with other aspects of your life. So when playing sport, for example, if you can get some PQ reps in, pos positively visualize, and it may be in the form of just focusing on your breath, focusing on the feel of the racket as the ball comes towards you, and then letting go of any saboteur voices that you may hear trying to make you anxious about your performance. Instead, just enjoy the moment, enjoy the game, and that actually may help you get better results in your sport. So I've covered a lot there, 
but I'll just start end with one question for you, and that's about reframing work, and instead of thinking about the day-to-day -day struggles, just take a moment to step back and think, how would I wish to be remembered at the end of my career? And asking this question may make you work in a team to be a much better person, a, a more involved team member that cares for others, and it may help your longer sense of fulfillment. I hope you found that helpful. Look forward to your comments below. Tell me all about your saboteurs, and I shall see you next time. Take care.